Hello everyone and welcome to another Thinking Thursday at the South Dakota Agricultural Heritage Museum. My name is Sarah and I'm the Education Coordinator and today we are starting uh, the first part of a two-part Thinking Thursday series. And so this series of Thinking Thursdays is going to be about soil particle sizes and today we're going to do an experiment so you can see what type of soil you have at home and then next week we'll go through the process of figuring out exactly how you take the results of this experiment and put it into practice and figure out what kind of soil you have. So there are a lot of different types of soil around the United States and they're divided up into parts depending on how much of a certain particle size of each soil particle you have in your garden or in your fields or in your lawn, um, wherever you're taking your soil sample from. So we're going to go ahead and get started. And first, I'm going to show you what we need for materials. The first thing that we'll need is a mason jar. I'm using a quart size mason jar today, but a pint size or a quart size will work perfectly. Um, the second thing you'll need today, which I already have inside my mason jar, is a soil sample. And so you want to fill your mason jar, depending on what size it is, about halfway full of soil. When you're putting the soil into your jar, make sure you keep a few things in mind. Um, when you take your soil sample for wherever you want to figure out what type of soil you have, whether that's a garden or a field or out in a lawn, you want to make sure you take the sample um, from top to bottom. And so what I mean by that is I don't want you to go out into your garden and just take a few handfuls off the top to fill it up and leave it at that. What I want you to do is look at how big your mason jar is and I want you to start from the top of the ground and go down, in my case, about four inches. So you're not only getting that top layer of soil, but you're digging down and getting some of that lower soil in as well because that soil still supports a lot of the different root systems that we have for our plants, whether you're growing vegetables or flowers out in the garden, or you're growing crops out in the field, or even grass out in the yard. So make sure you take your soil from top to bottom in that kind of four inch chunk. The other thing you wanna do is make sure that when you're putting your soil in your mason jar, that you break up any big clumps of dirt that you see, and you try to leave out any racks that you can. And we know that you know there are gonna be some little clumps that make their way in here. There might be a few little racks that make their way in here. Um, in my case, I even have a few blades of grass and that type of thing in here, and that's totally fine, but we just wanna avoid those really big clumps and the really big racks. The third thing and final thing that you'll need is some water. And so I have a cup of water right here. Now, to set up this experiment, it really doesn't take a whole lot of effort. You want to get your soil here inside your mason jar. And like I said, keep those things in mind for how you take your soil sample when you're doing that. And then you're going to go ahead and take your water and you're going to pour water in. To fill it up to almost the top. Now you want to make sure that you leave about an inch of space at the top so that you have room to shake things around. You want to make sure that you can do that shaking process. You can see that it's already starting to soak into my soil, which is great. I'm going to go ahead and close up my mason jar here. Make sure you close this really tight because your next step is to do some shaking and you don't want a muddy mess all over your kitchen or your office or wherever you're doing this. So you're gonna go ahead and seal that up and then the next part is to go ahead and start shaking. So you might need to kind of move it around a little bit and shake from a few different angles. Make sure that water gets all the way through. And you want all your soil to be dissolved by the time this is done. Okay, you can see my water level has now gone down quite a bit because it's soaked into the soil. 
So I might go ahead after this is done and add a little bit more water, give it one more good shake so that we're fully ready to go. Again, make sure you leave a little bit of head space at the top. Once you are done with this process, you have a bit of a waiting period. So in order to see what type of soil you have, you have to wait for the soil particles to settle down and settle out into different layers within your jar. Now there are three different soil particles that we're going to talk about today. And I'm gonna give a brief overview of them today and we'll talk a little bit about them again next week when we figure out what soil types we have. But the first soil particle is the biggest and it's called sand. All of you are probably really familiar with sand. Like I said, that's the largest soil particle. Um, the great thing about sand is that it drains water really easy, but that's also kind of a negative because if you have a lot of sand in your soil, it's going to have a hard time retaining water to make it accessible to your roots when your plants are trying to grow. Um, sand is also the particle that will heat up and also cool down really easily. And so it doesn't have a lot of temperature regulation within that particle. And so when you see things start to settle down within the, over the course of the next 20, up to 24 hours, the bottom layer that you'll see is going to be the sand. So the biggest particles are gonna to sink to the bottom. The next layer that you'll notice start forming over your sand is called silt. That's your next soil particle. That's gonna be your medium sized soil particle and silt's not something that's visible to the eye. And so you're not gonna be able to go out like you can on like a sandy beach and you can see individual particles of sand. You're not gonna be able to see the silt. Um, silt is the middle sized particle and that one is a little bit better at retaining and holding in a bit more moisture, but it also lets some moisture drain through, which is an okay thing too. Um, silt is usually what you see that goes off in like runoff and different things like that, um, and it can cause some soil erosion as well. Your smallest soil particle, which will be in your top layer on top of your silt layer, is actually called clay. And so clay is gonna be your smallest soil particle. You're definitely not gonna be able to see that with the naked eye. And that one, instead of kind of um, round or square shaped particles, Clay is actually a little bit more plate-like, so it stacks on top of each other like that. Um, clay is going to be really good at holding on and retaining to that moisture, but it's not going to be very good at letting that moisture sit through. So if you have a lot of clay on your soil and you get a really big heavy rain, a lot of that water might sit on top of your soil because it can't soak through because it's just really hard to get in between those really tight plates. And so those are the different kinds of soil particles. And like I said, you'll notice those starting to form over the course of the next several hours. Some of you, depending on your soil type, might see these distinct layers um, within a few hours, maybe like six or eight hours. Some of you, it might take more and or more time and be closer to a day. So what you should do is, like I said, shake this up really nice and well. Set it in a spot where it's gonna be undisturbed for up to 24 hours and let that sit without getting bumped, without getting tipped, to let those layers start to form. Once you get your layers formed in 24 hours, the next thing that you'll do is take a note of how or how big those layers are and figure out how big of a percentage that is. If you see your layers and half of what you see is sand and then you have 25% silt and 25% clay, write that down on a scratch piece of paper and keep that around because next week we'll talk about percentages that we see within the soil so that we can use something called a soil texture triangle to figure out what kind of soil you have. So like I said, let this sit for 24 hours, figure out those percentages, and we'll see you again next week when your experiments are all done and we can figure out what type of soil you have. So again, this has been another episode of Thinking Thursday. We hope to see you again next week, and thanks for watching. Bye.